Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. Hope I was enjoying your holidays and spending time with the family. I'm doing my update early this morning so I can spend time with mine, but we have a lot to talk about. And let's start off with the 500 millibar height anomalies because this kind of gives you a true depiction on what's really happening out there. Whenever you see this blue shaded area, that is typically your more unsettled weather and typically colder conditions. But once you trend up here in towards the Northeast, Getting into your reds, that's more sinking air and warmer conditions, typically drier conditions. And the darker the color, typically the warmer air is going to be. But that cold front will be on the move over the next couple of days. But right now, underneath that more unsettled weather, we have a lot of unsettled weather. There is your cold front draped across West Texas this morning. So back behind it, so you're definitely feeling that cold front. But out ahead of it, you're still in the warm sector across a good part of North and East Texas, picking up some definitely some beneficial rains across portions of Louisiana, getting into Oklahoma through Kansas this morning. There is your warm front surging up there into the Northeast, but there's the cold front and those winter weather advisors that went across the Rockies with still the snow flying, but now blizzard warnings highlighted across a good part of the Dakotas widespread winter storm watches in place for a significant winter storm is starting to come to fruition. In fact, we're looking at for some heavy snow, blizzard conditions, and will impact your holiday travel, including some freezing rain. So this could be a significant winter storm across good part of northern and central plains, as well as the upper Midwest, that will impact your holiday travel starting today all the way through your Tuesday time frame. We could be looking at some one inch per hour snowfall rates at times, and likely over 12 inches of snow in some of these areas that's across the Dakotas. That's why we have major to moderate impacts across a good part of the Dakotas, including Nebraska. But then all this transferred to some ice as well. And there's over a 50% probability that you could be looking at some significant over a tenth of an inch of ice across portions and once you get up here and towards portions of Minnesota and the Dakotas. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in, you get all my daily content on this channel. And I would love to reach 225,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So let's take a look at this winter storm, folks, because here's the setup later on this afternoon. So we're still within the warm sector out here in East Texas into Louisiana. Now the rain's gonna be draped across Arkansas through Missouri up here into Iowa. But there's the low pressure starting to develop further south and the snow is going to be starting to fly across, across North and South Dakota, including Nebraska as that cold front will be on the move. And so by the time you wake up on your Christmas morning, Here's where everybody will be feeling that cold front. It's mainly going to be all the way through a good part of Texas, shifting into Louisiana, through Arkansas, into Missouri. So you can definitely see the chillier temperatures back behind it. And out ahead of it, you're still within that warm sector. But that cold front will be eventually on the move, and everybody will be starting to feel that cold front in the days ahead. So... But there's the snowstorm that we got to be really concerned about, especially as it starts getting into your Christmas day. A lot of people are going to be out on the roads and traveling, uh, seeing their families. So definitely be on high alert with this significant event. So we got rain to the south. We've got heavier rains on Christmas day through Alabama, through Georgia, through Tennessee, all the way up to Kentucky, getting into Illinois portions of Iowa, but there's this snowstorm that really starts to take shape across the Dakotas. And unfortunately, we're looking at some freezing rain and ice developing along this corridor. And yes, those could start to accumulate on the roadways and start piling up. And you know, it's very dangerous. You can't drive on ice, folks, but the winds are going to be cranking. So as that low pressure will be draped across with that cold front moving across the southeast the day after Christmas, it's got some heavier winds going to be associated with it. But where that low is going to be starting to deepen, that's when the winds are really going to be start to crank up. 
that's when we could see the most significant gust of upwards of 50 maybe even possible 60 mile per hour wind gusts with blowing and drifting snow and snowing at one inch per hour it could be some whiteout conditions at times across portions of nebraska but there's that snowstorm in the day after christmas that's when it really starts to get cranking up there in the dakotas so we got significant ice across the north further south you got darker blues you got some heavier snows one inch per hour snowfall rates as the snows will be piling up and they could be pretty significant over a foot some isolated amounts could almost be up to two feet of some heavy snows across this region there's the heavier rain will be shifting off into the northeast the day after christmas but even even going into wednesday folks that snow is still flying so this is kind of a longer duration event that just now is starting to come to fruition but really starts cranking up for your christmas day and the day after christmas but it's still you know snowing pretty good on tuesday night across a good part of the you know through nebraska this will start to wind itself down and eventually shift off into portions of kansas there getting into even missouri but there's your ice that we have to be concerned about some of this could be significant i mean anything over a glaze you can't drive on so once you get the 10 and a quarter inch of ice it just gets pretty much impossible to drive on that stuff so definitely be on high alert and just kind of stay off the roads and avoid this area at all cost because if you're not dealing with the snow, you're gonna be dealing with the ice up there in the Dakotas through portions of Minnesota. It's just a dangerous setup. Uh, but there's the snow, right? I mean, it's pretty significant, right? I mean, we got all the way through the Dakotas, through Nebraska, there's your kind of a, your bullseye with that blizzard unfolding. Anywhere from a foot to the most bullish amounts of isolated areas of upwards to two feet is definitely not out of the question. And as this snow starts to kind of wind down, it will be drifting off into portions of Missouri, but so you can't roll out some even some one to two inch amounts across portions of Missouri. That will be on the day on Wednesday as this low pressure center will start to kind of expand and kind of wind itself down. So out ahead of it, still within that warm sector across the Northeast, you're still gonna get the heavier rains across a good part of New Jersey, through uh you know here into new jersey through delaware portions of maryland here all the way through portions of um, you know pennsylvania getting into ohio but there's the cold front will be drifting and on the move and back behind it once we get into that friday time frame i mean it's not like a significant arctic blast or anything like that but considering we've been so warm for winter we finally have some sort of winter returning after that colder shot into thanksgiving so it's been a while folks so finally we have winter returning with much of the country eventually starting to get impacted in those colder conditions especially as we start trending into that first week of january but as we end the month that colder pocket of air will be highlighted across the east across a good part of the northeast as well as the southeast and as well as the southern plains here that's where you're going to have your coldest anomalies take shape. And that's exactly what the Climate Prediction Center is predicting as, as of right now. Once we enter that 29th through that second time frame of January, remember January is our coldest month of the year. So whenever you see below average temperatures, you're already at the coldest time of the year these areas are further south so this is going to be some pretty chilly stuff and look at florida you finally get on the action all the way down to this coastline folks so even florida doesn't miss out on this cold shot that will be coming but as we trend towards that heading towards that new year's eve time frame with that colder pocket aloft and that low pressure center will be finally heading over to the northeast yeah i can't roll out some snow that will be breaking out across portions of you know kentucky through portions of Ohio here into West Virginia, into Pennsylvania, through New Jersey, all the way up here into the Northeast, getting into New England during that 29th and that 30th time frame. But once we get beyond that and head towards January, the pattern just even gets more amplified, folks. So what we're going to be basically seeing is this ridge of high pressure will be slowly eroding. So this is the beginning stages of the transition into much colder setup as we head into that January time frame. And as we do, 
that jet stream will be lowering and we're going into that coldest time of the year into January. So that's going to put the jet stream and these colder anomalies even further south and put the snow further south. So as of right now, around the second time frame, the, 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 the models have been trending pretty much, you know, you know, pretty consistent on this. A, a pocket of snow we're going to be drifting across a good part of you know Tennessee into Kentucky by then through West Virginia and getting into uh, in, into Virginia area as the jet stream starts to lower and then as it does the further it lowers the more colder air is going to put underneath so as we get into that January 5th January 6th time frame yes the ridge even lifts further north and allows that colder air to sink underneath and all the way down further south and this is on the ensembles too folks and again we're going into that coldest time of year so this should be a pretty chilly setup combined with the jet stream this is if you're looking for some wintry precipitation further south this is the time of year that you typically start to look for it especially if you've got a combination of colder conditions funneling in and the jet stream coming across too so with these low pressure centers setting up just south of texas here you get some of these overrunning type setups and we could have a swath of snow that comes through the texas panhandle through through uh through the ohio valley and up here to the mid-atlantic and then further south we'll have to watch possibly for some chillier rain and but even some mixed bags of precipitation if you live in the southeast i would think the third through that seventh time frame is just an area that time frame that you need to watch if uh if you know if if you know some you know wintery precipitation would likely unfold across that region so yeah even the climate prediction center has those above average rains trending as we go into that you know or you know without el nino takes taking shape this area is already seeing some good rains but now you start mixing that mixing in some of that colder wet weather and you're gonna get some snow across these regions so here's the ensembles on all three global guidances for between now and that first week of january so of course the bullseye that big blizzard sticks out like a sore thumb up here in the dakotas but the trending of snow could drop as far south as the Texas Panhandle. And I'm definitely looking for a storm track that highlights over the Texas Panhandle, up through portions of Oklahoma, through Missouri, that goes through the Ohio Valley, and up here into the Mid-Atlantic during, say, that third and seventh time frame. The GFS ensembles is also implying the same thing with the snow trending a little bit further south. And the Canadian is even more bullish with that particular setup as a good swath of snow will finally start to move into these regions, especially as we go into that first week of January as, as winter starts to show up on the map. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update, why I protect you before and after the storm.